Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32, here and destroy the ever living. Some people hate when I say it, but it's part of my intro, so I'm going to say it anyway. The boo 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 stain. All of that subscribe button so we can climb even further beyond the 1K ladder currently sitting at 1,033 subscribers. I really do appreciate it. All the support, ladies and gentlemen, from the bottom of my heart. Today has been an amazing day because my cancer meds made me feel high as a goat this morning. And now we're going to sit back, relax, strap on our little Yugi helmet while we lock out your monster zones and your spell and trap zones. Because this is a Kashtira post photon super sexy hypernova deck profile. So if you like it, be sure to smash the ever living boo boo stain off of that like button as well. And let's just go ahead and dive on into it. Now, right out of the gate, uh, I want to say that yes, this deck does have issues like any other deck. What are those issues? It loses to board breakers. It loses to some hand traps, depending on how much gas you open. It also loses a sphere mode, and it can also get in a beer rude. So I want you to keep that in mind as you look at this deck profile, because this isn't going to be a tier zero deck. Tier element and maybe even sprite to a degree will get destroyed or at least very much hit on our next balance come January, February-ish. And we do get Photon Hypernova in February. So do keep in mind when you want to build this deck that we are still trying, and well I say we, me, are still trying to figure out ways to play through Nibiru, deal with some of those issues. Because as of right now, unless we get some sort of TCG exclusives in Photon Hypernova that we just don't know about at the time of making this video... There's no like rank sevens or anything that Kashtira can go into to help go against Nibiru. So keep that in mind as you look at this profile. So let's go ahead and dive on into the main deck here. So we are playing three copies of Kashtira Fenrir. Now you would think that Fenrir would be like your go-to Stratos card, but it's actually Unicorn. Like this card's good, but you usually want to open up uh, one of your copies of Kashtira Unicorn. And yes, we do have the printout proxies because... You know, we're just going to be like that for this profile. I don't feel like using EDO Pro. So Unicorn, uh, all the cash tiers have a similar effect. If you control all monsters, you can special summon them from your hand. Unicorn, you can activate its effect to add a cash tier spell from your deck to your hand, whereas Fenrir adds you a monster, including itself. And then whenever the opponent activates a monster effect, or if you declare an attack with Unicorn, you can banish a card from the extra deck face down. And then, of course, we all know that Fenrir banishes a face-up card on the opponent's field face down. You want them to get banished face down because that's going to trigger Shangri-La because Shangri-La says that whenever a card that the opponent owns and possesses is banished face down, you lock out either a monster zone or a spell and trap zone. That is not once per turn. So these are sort of your main go-to Stratos cards as we move that over to get more centered. We're also playing three copies of the evil version of tier element Rhino Heart. <laughs> like that's literally what it is. It's a level four and instead of Rhino Heart being a water, this version of Rhino Heart's a fire, still the 1500, 2100 attack, or 1500 attack, 2100 defense, and it's an extender. So what you do is that if you control a cash tier or monster, whether it's an exceed or non-exceed, you can activate the effect in the hand to special summon it. And then it has an effect that during the turn it has been normal or special summoned and it's your main phase, you can activate the effect of Rhino heart to banish a cash tier a card so monster spell or trap from your deck in order to banish the top three cards of the opponent's deck face down of course since they're getting banished face down that's going to trigger shangri-la then for the rest of the turn after you activate that effect rise heart becomes a level seven so you can of course make rank seven plays depending on your build this either replaces psy beast astral karibo or ascended thunder depending on which card you're playing because it's just automatically a level seven it's an in-house psy beast without being forced to use psy beast i don't feel like psy beast is going to be seen any sort of play once we get these new cards because Rise Heart's just strictly better. Uh, and then we're playing one copy of Tier Element Cash Tira and then one copy of Scareclaw Cash Tira or Cash Tira Scareclaw, whichever it is. So they both have basically the same effect. Uh, whenever Scareclaw or Tier Element Cash Tira are in your hand, you can activate their effect to special summon them and then you banish either a Tier Element or Cash Tira card or in the case of Scareclaw or a Scareclaw card from your hand or grave and their level sevens. Uh, when tier element cash tier is summoned, it sends the top three cards of either player's deck to the grave. So if you've got like a D Fisher or a macro or something, then those cards will get banished. Or if a rise heart, the 3000 attack and defense exceed is on the field, all three cards will get banished. That'll trigger rise heart to add another material. Uh, Scareclaw cash tier is actually really interesting because it's literally a total defense shogun. It's zero attack, but 2600 defense on a fat ass. <laughs> and it can attack while in defense and you apply 
apply its defense as the damage. So like if you want to attack for massive damage directly, you can summon this out in defense and then just swing for 2600. It's disgusting. It's not like super broken in the grand scheme of things because you usually just use it as a level 7 extender, but the fact that like if you're in a grind game or you're about to go to time, you can just drop this thing out and just swing for 2600. Like uh, that that's insane. That's just literally insane. Uh, and then continuing on with the monsters, we are playing three copies of Astral Karibo. You reveal either Big Eye or Diabolsis in your extra deck to summon this to make a rank 7 number monster. It's really good. And then we're playing three copies of D-Shifter because we don't give a damn about the grave. And we're playing one copy of Pancratops because it's just another level 7. Um, you're usually going to be going second with this deck. Spoiler alert, it is a going second build. Um, so Pancratops is really good for helping to break boards, and it's also a level 7, so it's just instantly good. This is a proxy. I'm sorry. I just, I'm too lazy to print sometimes. This is for um, the Ascended of Thunder. So it's a 2700 attack, 2400 defense uh, beater. It's level 7 um, on a non-activation effect. So you just pay the 3000 as cost. On a non-once per turn, you can summon out the Ascended Thunder, and then whenever it's destroyed by battle or the opponent's card effect, you gain 5,000 life points. That's usually never going to come up. We're playing three because Kashtira Birth says you can normal summon any level seven monster without tributing. So you can just normal summon an Ascended Thunder, pay 3,000 to summon another one. Like it's it's really good for extenders or if you just want to go for game with raw damage, it's, it's really, really good. And then that is it for the boatload of monsters that we're playing. We're playing three copies of Lightning Storm because again, we want to go second. Um, which I think that this is actually the perfect reason to talk about why we're playing going second Cash Tira. The thing is, with Cash Tira going first, you're very susceptible to hand traps. You're very susceptible to Nibiru, right? Well, with the concept of going second, you eliminate a lot of those issues. You know, the opponent just vomits all over the board. They make a big ass board, but yet if you're if they're under D shifter, they may just have to pass play to you. Then you can start doing your combos and locking them out of their zones or just swinging for game. Lightning Storm helps you break those boards that you can actually build your own board and you know get to the point where you have one maybe with enough gas two Shangri Las out and you're just locking them out of all their zones. It's not often that you're going to be getting out two Shangri La. You're usually just going to end on one with the with the Diabolsis and the Arise Heart. But I have had a couple instances where I can get out double Shangri La and lock out two zones at one time. Um, so that, that does come up. Lightning Storm just being a perfect card for going second. You know, if they make you go first, I've noticed that it's really not too big of a deal depending on what your opening hand is because sometimes you just have enough gas in your hand to where even if you have like a couple going second cards in your hand, as long as you have enough gas to start building your board and they're not hand trapping you, you're going to be fine. So that is something to keep in mind with that. Along with our all gas to the floor, we're playing three copies excuse me, of, of uh, almost called it Super Poly, of Pot of Prosperity. Now, why are we playing these over Sacred Sword? Sacred Sword is cool. Um, you know, if you summon out, like, say, Cash Tier of Fenrir, and you use its effect to search for Unicorn, you can activate Sacred Sword to banish a level 7 from your hand or field to draw 2. So you can banish the Fenrir on field, draw 2, summon Unicorn, get Birth, play Birth to get out the Fenrir, make a play. That is an option. I like Prosperity, though, because a lot of the cards in the extra deck you don't really care about going first or second. Um, and you do play several multiples of, so like a lot of two ofs really more than anything. So you can stand to get rid of one ofs for some of them. Um, Prosperity just helping you to dig for that either going second card or for a card that you need to just get your plays going. Um, because it's not often that I brick with this deck, but when you do, Prosperity helps you unbrick. I feel that Prosperity overall is just a lot better in a build like this. But if you you know want to play Sacred Sword, that is another route you can go down. This deck is very adaptable, very malleable in that regard. And then we're playing three copies of, this might as well be called Kashtira e Telly. <laughs> so uh, this is Kashtira Papayas. It might be a little hard to see on camera, that uh, that little proxy. You can see it right there, Papayas. So this is literally an e Telly. You activate it. It's unfortunately a normal spell, not a quick play. You target a Kashtira monster on your field, and then you summon one from your deck in defense mode with a different attribute than the one that you targeted. So if you target Unicorn, since it's a wind, you can get out something that's not a wind. So you can say, like, go for Fenrir to get to a Rise Heart. Fun stuff like that. Also, whenever it is banished from anywhere, um, you can add one banished Kashtira card from your banish zone to your hand. So it lets you add back a Kashtira monster, or if you banish Kashtira Big Bang, which you usually will off the Arise Heart, then it helps you get that stuff back. You just can't get itself back, which is kind of depressing. But I mean, if you're this, that banishing effect never really comes up. But if it does, then it does. Uh, let's see here. Moving on, we have the tier element. Uh, 
Primeval Planet Field spell, but the uh, Cash Tira version. So this is Primeval Planet Pariah. So it, just like the Tier Element Field spell, it adds you a actually instead of a tier, it adds you a Cash Tira monster from deck to hand, and it has all your monsters getting 100 attack and defense for each different attribute on your field. So if you got five different attributes, they're all gaining 500 attack and defense. Once per turn, if Cash Tira Shangri La activates its effect, you can use the effect of Pariahs once per turn to pop one card on the field. So if you're popping off and you use Shangri La's effect, you can use the Pariahs to pop a card that maybe your one of your going second, you know, board wipes did not get rid of, or maybe your opponent set something up that now your Pariahs can pop. So it gives you a a pop interrupt also during the standby phase of both players' turns because Shangri La during the standby phase of both players' turns summons out a Cash Tira. So, very good card. Um, not super overpowered. I would argue that the Tier Element Field spell is more powerful since it shuffles stuff back into the deck. Um, but still pretty good regardless. Then we're playing two copies of Birth. I was on three of these and I was kind of bricking. There, You could make an argument that you only need to play one because you can get it back with Papias and you can search it off of the Unicorn. Uh, but I feel that two is a good number. You know, if one gets hit or banished, whatever, you've got the other one as backup to search off the Unicorn. Gives you another target for Unicorn. Um, you activate it and it lets you normal summon level seven monsters without tributing. Once per turn, you can special summon a banished cash to your monster to your field of any level. And then if your opponent activates a spell, then on resolution, you can use the effect of birth to target three cards in their grave and banish them face down. That doesn't really ever come up that often. It's mostly just for an extender to get back your cards from the banish zone. Uh, and then we're playing one terraforming because I've heard that searching field spells is good. <laughs> Uh, and then three evenly matched for just more going second shenanigans. Then we're playing one copy of Cash Tira Big Bang, the card that never comes up, and I'm literally only playing it for a rise heart. So uh, you can activate it. It's basically like an evenly. If you control a Cash Tira Exceeds monster, then both players banish cards on the field until they only control one, which is whatever, I guess. But whenever it's banished, you target a Cash Tira Exceeds monster on your field, take one of the Cash Tira uh, monsters that's attached to it as a material, you can add it to your hand, and then if you want, you can special summon it. So if you've got like a Fenrir or a Unicorn on your Shangri-La, then you can add it back to your hand and then summon it once this is banished. So the typical play is summon a Rise Heart, use the effect Banish, Big Bang, Banish the top three cards they put on stack face down, Shangri-La, Chain Link 1, Big Bang, Chain Link 2, add back Fenrir or Unicorn, summon it, and then Shangri-La locks out a back row. Really good in that regard. And then I want to say this very quickly on the side deck. Uh, we are playing, I'm, well, rather, I'm definitely playing, it's still in the testing phase, uh, one a pointer and three Light Force Swords. So what does this card do? So Light Force Sword, uh, you can activate it at any time, and it rips a card at random out of the opponent's hand, but it banishes it face down. Then on the fourth standby phase of the opponent's standby phase, after you activate this card, they get the card back to their hand. So basically, they lose it for four turns, the game's going to be over by that point. Well, since it banishes face down, that triggers Shangri-La. So you open up three of these, and in a pointer, then you're ripping four cards out of the opponent's hand, three of which are face down, and they're losing three main monster zones or three spell and trap zones because of the Shangri-La. That is disgusting. You need to be playing, at the very least, three light force sword if you're not going to be playing a pointer. For the extra deck, we are playing two of the card that makes the world go round. Three Cash Tira Shangri-La. Uh, if it would be destroyed, you can detach a material instead. It's got zero attack and a 3,000 defense fat ass. <laughs> and on a non-once per turn, whenever a card the opponent owns and possesses banished face down, you lock out a main monster zone or a spell and trap zone. Uh, it's really good. During either player's standby phase, you get to summon a Cash Tira. It's really disgusting. Then we're playing two of the big bad boss monster out of Hypernova. Cash Tira Rise Heart. So it's 3,000 attack and defense. Literally a macrocosmo. Any card sent to the graveyard is banished instead. Whenever a card is banished, uh, which is not once per turn, you can use it, you can activate its effect to take one banished card face up or face down and attach it to a rise heart as a material. Quick effect once per turn, it can detach three materials to target one card on the field and banish it face down. So yeah, banish something face down, it gets a bunch of materials back anytime a card's banished, so it's always triggering, and uh yeah. It, uh, it triggers Shangri-La, which is really cute. And normally it would take multiple level 7s. You can use one Cash Tira monster as the whole material if Shangri-La activated its effect this turn. So typically your end board is going to be uh, a Rise Heart, Diabolsis, and Shangri-La. We'll be showing that combo uh, near the end. Uh, extra deck is still kind of in the works, but we're definitely playing two Diabolsis. It's really good. You could be playing one to two Flare Metal, depending on your build. It's just another good rank seven to go into. You could also be playing one to two Big Eye, just depending on your build. I like one Draco Sack. It's, it's there when you need it. It doesn't really ever come up. Uh, you could be playing one to two copy of Zeus. Again, this is just in the testing phase. And like I said, this is in the testing phase. We're playing one dark and one access code. There's a lot of different rank seven exceeds. You could be playing Master of Blades. You could be playing the one where it's unaffected by monster effects depending on the type of attributes it has uh, attached to it as a material. I don't remember the name off the top of my head. So that is something to keep in mind. 
when building the extra deck. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and dive into the full-fledged combo. Okay, guys, so our first combo showing you just basically the bare necessities of what this deck can do is just if you open up Kashtira Unicorn. So we're going to summon Kashtira Unicorn, activate its effect to add a Kashtira spell to our hand. We're going to get the Kashtira Papias. We're going to go ahead and activate Papias' effect, targeting the Unicorn, which is going to let us get another Kashtira monster to our field. We're going to go for the Baroque Ass Kashtira Fenrir. We're going to activate Fenrir's effect, which is going to let us get Kashtira Arise Heart to our hand. And this is kind of where, depending on what your opening hand is, that you can kind of branch off and do different things. But we're just going to go for the, you know, basic bare necessities here. So we are going to overlay, and I'm actually going to go for the uh, Kashtira Shangri-La, and I'm actually going to put it in the extra monster zone because I want to save as many of my uh, main monster zones as possible uh, to have open. So I know it's kind of hard to see, but this is the extra monster zone. We're going to activate uh, Kashtira Arise Heart's effect to summon it. Uh, since we control Kashtira Monster on a new chain, we're going to activate Arise Heart's effect to banish the Kashtira Big Bang from our deck to banish the top three cards of the opponent's deck face down. That's going to trigger the Shangri-La. They now have one monster zone locked out. On chain link two, we're going to activate the Kashtira Big Bang that's been banished to target the Shangri-La. And you can go for Fenrir or Unicorn. I'm going to go for Unicorn since we don't have an established board to get it to our hand and then special summon it. And like I said, the opponent has one main monster zone locked out. The Rise Heart is now level seven. So with this basic setup, if you don't and if you don't have like any other cards to play with, you can either go for a Rise Heart here, or you can just overlay into Diabolsis, use its effect to banish a card from the extra deck face down, which will trigger its secondary effect to banish cards on the top of the opponent's deck face down. So you would end up ending on a Diabolsis, and then you would also end uh, on a Shangri-La that has locked out a total of three main monster zones. Uh, on the opponent's field. That is just like a basic board if you open up like Unicorn and nothing else. So let's go ahead and show you what happens when you open up all of the gas to the floor, which spoiler alert, I would say about 95% of the time you will. So this is like a perfect example of your top five card opening hand because this is like honestly a lot of the time what you'll open up with and it's just really disgusting. So of course, we're going to start off by activating Dimension Shifter. You don't need to worry about Gamma because ain't nobody playing that shit, at least right now in 2022 going into 2023. So now both players' graveyards are locked out. That's really hot. We're going to go ahead and summon the Kashtira Unicorn. We already have the Papayas in hand, so we're just going to use it to go for Kashtira Birth. And, of course, we're going to go ahead and activate it because it's going to be going off here in just a moment. We're going to go ahead and activate the Papayas targeting the Unicorn. Papayas is going to get banished because of the Shifter. And then we are going to go for Unicorn. We already opened up with a Rise Heart in this hand's opening uh, so we'll just use the cash tier of Fenrir. You could go for another Fenrir, but I, for one, am going to go ahead and go for, eh, let's go for the tier element cash tier because I like to make my opponent mill cards. So we've used both of those effects. That's fun. That's good and dandy. We're going to go ahead and overlay once again into, you guessed it, Kashtira Shangri-La. Uh, and now we're just, we're, we're in the driver's seat at this point. We're going to go ahead and activate a Rise Heart to summon it. We're going to activate its effect. We're going to banish, as I call it, Big Bang Blow. I don't know if I've already called it that in this profile or not. I know it's kind of hard to see. Uh, we're going to banish the Big Bang to mill the top three cards the opponent's deck face down. That's going to trigger Shangri-La, Chain Link 1, Big Bang, uh, Chain Link 2. We're going to go ahead and go for Fenrir because it literally does not matter. Uh, you could just say if you want to have the best possible play, you'll go for the Unicorn for when they activate a monster effect. If we don't have anything on the board, then you could banish Carpenter or extra deck face down. Um, but besides the point, the Rise Heart is now level 7. We're going to go ahead and activate the Astral Karibo. We're going to reveal the Diabolsis Mind Hacker. So then we will go ahead and summon out the Astral Karibo. So now as long as Astral Karibo is up, we can only go into number of monsters. That's totally fine because we're going to go ahead and overlay both into Diabolsis. But we're not done yet. No, no, no. Because now we make a Rise Heart. So now any card sent to the graveyard is banished instead. Um, yeah, this this is just disgusting. We're going to go ahead and activate Diabolsis. 
to detach the Fenrir, which is going to get banished because of the D shifter being active, to take a card from their extra deck, banish it face down, and that's going to just trigger everything. That's going to trigger a, a Rise Heart on Shinlink 1 to get a card that's banished and attach it as a material. That's going to trigger Shangri-La on Shinlink 2 to lock out a zone, and that's going to trigger Diabolsis on Shinlink 3 to banish cards on the top of the deck face down since a card was banished face down. So once all that happens, now two zones have been locked out from the Shangri-La, but now you have to do it all over again with the Arise Heart and the Shangri-La because cards just got banished face down off the secondary Diabolsis effect. So Shangri-La is going to be Chainlink 1, locking out a third zone, and then Arise Heart is going to attach another material. So at this point, you now have Primeval Planet Pariahs and Big Bang attached as material to the Arise Hearts. Now it has three materials and it's loaded up for next turn to banish a card the opponent controls face down. You could also use the Birth to get out Fenrir in defense. So you end on four monsters, plus you have Tier Element Cash Tira in your hand for a follow-up on the next turn. Um, or if at some point in the combo, if like you didn't want to special summon back out Fenrir, then you could have left it in your hand when you got it back with Big Bang, banished it to summon Cash Tira, and then you could mill their top three cards, but then they're going to get banished because of a Rise Heart. Since the card was banished, you can now attach one as a material, and then you could just get back Fenrir with Birth at that point, which honestly is the better play because then you would end on this, and then you can make either another Shangri-La or just another Rank 7. So guys, that is pretty much the basis of how Cash Tira works works. Yes, you can Nibiru this deck to fucking hell and back. I understand that. But this is just a proof of concept that we are still working on, that we're still labbing, and let we just got to see where the format goes with it. So I hope that you guys enjoy this in-depth deck profile and combos. If you did, be sure to leave a like. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.